Um, I became involved in the show because I got a call from my agent and I got uh, an audition for it. And I had many interviews for the part of Phoebe. And I seem to remember I had to travel, I think it was somewhere like Birmingham, to finally audition with Nicholas in front of a, a room full of people. It was very intimidating. And then I, I got offered the part and it was, you know, from there on in, did what I had to do. I hadn't, oh, well, I was aware of certainly Nicholas Lindhurst's work in, in Good Nights uh, in Only Fools and Horses and various other programmes, but I didn't know anyone else. Um, so it was always very daunting. It's always very nerve-wracking. It's like the first day of school and you walk in and and you just hope that you're going to be good and that no one's going to fire you when you when you have your first initial reading of the script. And fortunately, they didn't. And... Uh, and it was, you know, it was really pleasant. It was really lovely. But they're all, all very lovely people. I thought it was a great premise for the series. I thought it was really interesting, this idea of having this character from the future coming back to the past. And in a way, he sort of was almost so alien, his, um, his ability to innately, intuitively have this idea about what was going to happen next. And, and for Phoebe, her, um, her complete amazement and delight and surprise at, at this outrageous, quite weirdly macho character, and yet he was quite passively macho about it. I thought it was a great idea. And I think the public responded to it enormously. You know, it was a real success. I think I was very grateful that um, in, by series two there was um, a strength there, an emotional strength and a development and I think it made it much more interesting for me to play. I think one of the main difficulties I had as an actress was trying to sustain the, the sense of, of naivety and greenness without her coming across as completely stupid and ignorant all the time. Um, which was understandable. Here you had this character from the future who was dashing and funny and smart and witty um, and who amazed her continuously with his incredible uh, insight into what was going to happen next almost, his uncanny ability to suggest this is going to happen. And um, I think it was very... If, if there hadn't been that emotional development by series two, it would have become very one-dimensional. But I think, um, I think they, they really managed to create something that was just enjoyable for me to play. <laughs> well, we have dark hair, <laughs> we have pale skin. <laughs> um, no, not really. I don't think so. I don't see it, but if other people do, that's fine. But I, I certainly uh, don't have her naivety, that's for sure. I'd have loved to have had the chance to sit down with the writers and suggest things. I certainly um, had many ideas, but I didn't have the confidence and I didn't really have the ability to communicate. Uh, with them. I was very in awe of everyone. I, I mean, it was nearly 10 years ago and it was a big break for me. And uh, I was working with people who were highly skilled and highly experienced. And I, 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 I pulled back. I was very quiet and sat there and just did what I had to do and tried to do it um, to the best of my ability. I mean, you've got to remember that Shooting a sitcom, you, you shoot in front of cameras, but you also shoot in front of a live audience. So the first night that I ever did it, um, I was like a robot because the fear that I experienced was just, I mean, it was terrifying. It was absolutely terrifying. So I, I would have loved to have uh, had an input, but um, I'm afraid I, I didn't speak up.
Yeah, I was. Um, but I think I was surprised by the show's success because I am, contrary to what people think, I'm actually deeply insecure and nervous and I always question what I'm doing. And, um, you know, at that time, I think we were getting 13 million viewers, I seem to remember. And uh, that was an enormous amount of people watching and writing in and being so warm and appreciative. And I had never really experienced that. Um, I'd never been regularly uh, once a week on television in something that had struck such a chord with all generations because it wasn't just geared at people who had survived the war. It was geared at their grandchildren who could sit there with them comfortably knowing that they were going to get a very, maybe a slightly sugary lesson on, the, on, on, on that period of British history. But nevertheless, it gave them some insight as, as to what their grandparents had suffered and went through and uh, I thought it, it, the series and the show handled that very well and I thought that the um, certainly when you went back into the 1940s the set design, the props the costumes were so accurate I thought it was wonderful but I, I think it had that nostalgia and it had um, a sentimentality about it that, uh, that the public really liked it was easy viewing and it was entertaining it was warm what more can you want for ask for <laughs>